imagine that you are part of a development team and your management asks you to develop a containerized app. Unfortunately, the budget and duration given for this project is very limited. So now, how can you develop and host containerized app with all that load balancing, scalability and fault tolerance features within that short duration and budget? Hello and welcome to Google Kubernetes Engine, in short, GKE. So in next few minutes, I'll try my best to get you up to speed on what is Google Kubernetes Engine and how easy it is to install and configure Kubernetes cluster and deploy a sample containerized app on GKE. Before you watch this video, it is required to have a basic understanding of what is Kubernetes and its basic architecture. So, without any further delay, let's take a look at the things you'll be learning in this video. In first section, we'll discuss the concept around GKE. What is it and what it does and its advantages. After that, in part 2, we'll review the demo we are about to perform live in advance. This will help you better understand when you watch actually doing it on a live system. So in this review demo, I'll show you how easy it is to create Kubernetes cluster with couple of worker nodes and then we'll test the entire Kubernetes setup by deploying a sample application. And finally, in part 3, we will have the actual demo creating the Kubernetes cluster on GKE. So that's about the primary objectives of this video. With that, let's get started with our first topic in this video and that is, what is GKE? Before I answer that, let me ask you a question. Do you know where did Kubernetes is born and who developed it? Any guess? It is at Google. Google has built Kubernetes from ground up based on more than a decade of their experience in managing containers at a large scale inside Google. So they are offering same Kubernetes as a service on Google Cloud. And that service is called as Google Kubernetes Engine. In short, GKE. So by running Kubernetes on top of Google Cloud, there are many advantages to it. First, Kubernetes automatically creates VM for you. Meaning, all you need to tell GKE about number of nodes you need inside your cluster and CPU and RAM each node of this cluster contains. And that's all. So once you submit this form, GKE will automatically create those nodes in the background. And most importantly, it takes care of all Kubernetes cluster configuration such as installing Kubernetes software applications and joining the worker nodes as such. This is all done in just a matter of few minutes. And this is one of the major advantage of using GKE. Next, GKE takes care of managing Kubernetes master. Typically, you require a couple of Kubernetes master nodes for high availability and load balancing purposes. But if you are using GKE, then you don't have to worry about how many master nodes are required. Because GKE takes the responsibility of managing this master node up and running all the time. Next, etcd. Etcd is a key value data store. Kubernetes stores all its configuration about its nodes and its objects in etcd. Typically, it requires multiple copies of it to address the fault tolerance. But GKE takes care of how many etcd is required, so you can sit back and relax. Next, container networking. As we discussed in previous QBDM video, there are multiple pod network plugins. Some of them are Calico, Flannel, and Wave. So when you are setting up manually, you need to have a full knowledge of advantages and disadvantages of these plugins. That's a considerable amount of time you are investing in to find out which plugin is right for you. But if you're using GKE, it takes care of all container networking details on behalf of you. Now, 
moving on to OS built for containers. GKE provides operating system which is ideal for running containers, which is mostly slimmed down version of actual OS image. The size of containerized optimized OS image is very less when compared to OS image. CoreOS is one of the popular containerized optimized OS image for running containers. So, GKE has a containerized optimized OS, a hardened OS built and managed by Google specifically for running containers. Next thing is auto scale. Let's imagine that during around Thanksgiving, there was a sudden surge in traffic and accessing the application. Then you will see the sudden increase in CPU and RAM utilization on the system. So to address this sudden traffic increase, you need to increase the number of application instances behind your load balances. Otherwise, your application might go down. This is where GKE comes to your rescue. GKE takes care of scaling your applications up and down based on your resource utilization such as CPU and RAM. Next is Auto Upgrade. Kubernetes has a release almost every 3 to 4 months. So GKE will automatically keep your cluster up to date with the latest version of Kubernetes. Kubernetes release updates are quickly made available within Kubernetes engine. Next is Auto Repair. When Auto Repair is enabled inside GKE, if a node fails, a health check Kubernetes engine initiates a repair process for that node and will try to get that node back online. Next is Integrated Logging and Monitoring. You can configure logging and monitoring in GKE with just one tick mark in the checkbox. It makes it easy to gain insight into how your application is running. And finally, fully managed. Kubernetes clusters are fully managed by Google Site Reliability Engineers, in short, SREs, ensuring your cluster is available and up to date. So these are all some of the important features of GKE. Definitely, with the help of GKE, you can deploy containerized apps with some basic understanding of Kubernetes. This can be managed by development teams or DevOps teams. And now it's time to show you how easy it is to create Kubernetes cluster in GKE. In next few slides, we'll review the demo we are able to perform. In the demo, we'll be creating Kubernetes clusters with three worker nodes. Each node contains 3 GB of RAM and one virtual CPU. First, let me show you how can you access Kubernetes from Google Cloud. This is a screenshot of Google Cloud homepage. First, you need to select the Kubernetes engine under Compute section as you see in the screenshot. From there, you need to click on the cluster. This will take you to the GKE homepage. In case if there are any other clusters already configured, then it will display on the screen. In case if there are no clusters, then you will get screen similar to this. Once you hit the Create cluster, it will take you to the next screen which consists of form where you need to fill the requirements for your Kubernetes cluster. And we'll see that form in next slide. So once you hit the create cluster button in previous screen, you'll be presented with this form. In this form, you need to fill the name of your Kubernetes cluster. Next, select the location type. Here it will default to zonal. Different between zonal and the regional is, you will have a multiple zones within one region. For example, you have US Central A, B, C zones in US Central region. So in our example, we selected Zonal. Next, we'll select the zone. Here, we have selected US Central A. And then, you have to select Kubernetes engine version. Current released version of Kubernetes is 1.11. As of this recording, GKE currently allows you to select 1.9.6 to 1.10.7. Next, we need to select the number of nodes that you want to have in this cluster. You can have a maximum of 1000 nodes per cluster. Next, we need to select how many virtual CPUs and how much of memory each machine can have. In case if you want to enable logging and monitoring, then you need to expand 
advanced options and select the checkbox. So that's all. If you look at one more time, everything is defaulted for you, except the number of nodes. So once you have filled that, all you need to do is hit the create button to create the cluster. So within next few minutes, your brand new Kubernetes cluster will get ready. That's how simple it is. Once it is ready, then it's time to connect to the Kubernetes master and test that by doing some deployment. Here is a screenshot of the cluster we just created. As you can see, this cluster is located in US Central A zone. It has three VMs, where there are a total of three virtual CPUs and 12 GB of RAM in total. So to connect to the cluster, hit the connect button. Then you will see the screen. In case if you have a cloud shed already open, then run this command in it. If not open, just simply hit the run in cloud shell button. That's it. Now you can play with your Kubernetes cluster on GKE. Let's do some testing to make sure our cluster is working as it should be. In next slide. First, let's display the nodes inside the cluster. You can do that by using kubectl get nodes command. As you can see, there are three worker nodes and all of them are in ready status. Overall, cluster looks good. Now, let's try to deploy a sample application to see if there are any issues creating it. So to create a deployment, we'll use the kubectl run command. If the execution completes successfully, you'll see the following output. So now to display the pods which are created as a part of this deployment, we will use the kubectl get pods command. So there is one pod which is created as part of above deployment and running successfully. So once you get familiarized with Kubernetes, you can explore various other screens of Kubernetes dashboard where it displays the workloads, services, applications, and storage. Since this video is limited to configure Kubernetes on GKE, so I am stopping it here. Coming to a summary, in this video, we first discussed about what is GKE and what it does. So GKE is a Kubernetes service on Google Cloud Platform. Then we discussed about the various advantages of Kubernetes. After that, in review demo section, we discussed about how easy it is to create Kubernetes cluster on GKE. And we also did testing by deploying a sample application to make sure if everything is working as it should be. And coming up next, actual demo of GKE, where we will perform the exact steps that we just discussed in the review demo section. And finally, thank you so much for watching this and hope to see you in the next video.